can you hear that? You, you hear that noise? Exactly. Nothing. It has been super, extremely, kind of awkwardly silent when it's come to the Ravens. And I know normally that state of the Ravens season ending presser, where's Bashadi, where's Eric DaCosta, where's Harbaugh, that usually comes like early, early February or late, late, late January. But it's just been crazy silent for the Ravens. And that's both from within and from without of the organization. Now, we did hear about uh, Hortiz being a candidate for a Giants GM job, so we'll see what happens with that. And we have heard about uh, a lot of play some players getting signed to some future reserve deals by the Ravens. But besides that, we just haven't heard much of anything. Now, you all know how I feel about the Ravens heading into this offseason. Would I like to see some change happen? Yeah, sure. Do I expect to see some change happen? No, not at all. I don't. But in the words of my guy, David, um, he said it best. Because I, I, I said, man, it's very quiet with the Ravens. And he said it's super quiet, almost like a toddler. When it's too quiet, something unusual is happening. And, and we'll see. We're, we're not here to sort of talk about any rumors because there aren't really any rumors out there right now when it comes to the Ravens. But I just really wanted to get you all's point of view on a couple of matters. Now, we, of course, know that uh, there have been a lot of head coach firings over the past couple of days. Brian Flores from the Dolphins, Matt Nagy from the Bears, Zimmerman from the Vikings. Um, and there have been more, too. And I don't know why I can't even think of some more off the top of my head. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Scapegoat, Mr. Placeholder, the guy that was is, was only put in place there until they found their real candidate that they were looking for. The guy that was probably only put in place there so he could have uh, they could probably hopes to ha he could have a personal relationship with Deshaun Watson and get him to come play for them. David Cully. And yes, to a lot of people's questions, the Ravens, they will get another third round pick for the hiring of David Culley from last year. But still, and he does walk away with about 21, 22 mil uh, for just one year of coaching the Texans. But so he got okie doke, but he did get paid for being okie doke. But we all knew and we said this last year when he got hired, he was just a placeholder. He was walking into a mess. He walked away with, what, four wins, I think? And, and I didn't even realize until yesterday, I didn't even realize that they were sec I mean, second from last. They were third in their division. I'm like, with, with that roster, with that team, with that quarterback play, it was second in the I mean, second to last. I keep saying second. They were third in the division? Like, whoa. But there have been a lot of firings from different head coaches around the league. Um... And I think one that really sort of rocked Ravens fans was when one, Brian Flores, um, but another was uh, the Giants, Joe Judge. Um, when he got fired, a lot of Ravens fans, that really opened up their eyes because they were like, wait a minute. This is where Wink had an interview a couple of years ago, after the Ravens 2019 season, he had an interview with them and it was like, oh, wow, like, uh, could, is he going to go? And back then, most Ravens fans, including myself, were like, no, no, we want to keep all coordinators. We want that consistency because we did. We certainly did, especially after that season. And it, oh, what a crazy season it was. But he didn't get the job. And a lot of us wondered, like, well, why, how? But uh, we'll take it. No complaints over here. And Greg Roman, he had an interview, too. I forget what the job was. I want to say it was for the Browns head coaching job, but I cannot remember off the top of my head. But he had an interview, too, but he obviously he didn't get it either. But now this season, with, with the Giants opening, um, a lot of people were like, oh, maybe the Giants may revisit Wink. We haven't heard anything yet. 
haven't heard a peep. It's been very, very quiet. Uh, and it's been very, very quiet with Ravens coordinators in general. You haven't heard anything about anybody wanting Greg Roman. You haven't heard anything about anybody wanting Wink Martindale. And a lot of Ravens fans wondering like, whoa, why not? Why is nobody trying to hire these guys? Did you not see the performance that these guys did with so many people that were hurt? Why is nobody going after these guys? And it makes you wonder. But something I wanted to touch on today um, was just my thoughts on how the Ravens are going to handle the future. And that future is with Harbaugh and that future is with Lamar Jackson. Because something that the Ravens, they love to do. They love to do it. They love to have players um, where players of significant value, they love to make themselves have to make tough decisions. And what I mean when I say that is that they, they love to have players sort of align with each other when their time is up. Now, they've recently done this um, with J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. Uh, because when they signed Jake, I mean, when they signed Gus Edwards to that three year extension last year, his deal just so happens to run out at the same time as one J.K. Dobbins. Same time his rookie deal is up. That's when uh, Gus Edwards contract is up as well. But somebody else that not necessarily tied to the hip. But right now, Lamar Jackson his contract is up the same time that John Harbaugh's contract is up. This upcoming year, he will be playing on his fifth year option. And then after that, right now, we, we know it's probably not going to get to that. But after that, he is going to be a free, a scheduled to be a free agent. We don't expect him to just walk in free agency. We don't expect that. No, we don't. But... This is his last year under contract this year as of right now, because we know an extension could happen at any time. But somebody else who's under the last year of their contract is John Harbaugh. And I've been thinking, was even in a Twitter space yesterday asking a question. What do you think is the Raven? How do you think the Ravens are going to handle John Harbaugh being on that last year of his deal? Because, you know, as far as their head coaches, they don't like them on those, uh, what do they call it, lame duck contracts? I think that's what Bashadi called it. But they, they, they typically don't like that. So what's going to happen with Harbaugh? Well, um, it, it seems to me, and we of course did the video yesterday, uh, about when the Ravens are going to pay Lamar Jackson. And we had a lot of different responses from everybody. Shout out to all of y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all uh, just really giving your honest opinions. Because some people were like, oh, well, we the Ravens need to pay him ASAP. Some people were like, oh, the Ravens need to hold off and he needs to prove more. Some people were like, oh, he never deserves to be paid from the Ravens. They should just move on. But... I respect everybody's opinion. I don't always agree with it. And just like y'all with mine, I'm sure Well, some of y'all don't respect my opinion, which is fine. Uh, but y'all don't always agree with it. And that's fine, too. But um, it was just y'all 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 gave a lot. Y'all shared a lot in the comment section. So I, I appreciate y'all for that. But with John Harbaugh, I think this is for John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson. Um, I do think the Ravens. They're going to make them both play this thing out. Uh, and now if I had to pick between the two that could get an extension first, I will say it could be Lamar. But um, it's, that's why it's so tricky. That, and, and that's what makes you think like they'll make them play this whole thing out that much more. Because John Harbaugh, he... You look at, again, after Ray Lewis and A.A. Reid, the two playoff wins, um, loss, what, what will we lose, six in a row this season? And we, again, we know the injuries. But next year, I think they're going to be like, like, look, whatever happens this year, injuries out the window, whatever happens this year, your job depends on it. 
your job depends on, okay, you want to keep Greg Roman? You don't want to fire him? That's fine. That's cool. We roll with Greg Roman. But know that you're going to roll if if this thing ain't right. Yeah, whatever you want to do. I, I think they're going to just they, they're going to give him the keys this year and be like, here, take the car, take the car, John. But just know there's no insurance on the car. So if you crash, that's it. We ain't paying for it. That's not on us. And we'll move on. I just and, and this is why I think that it's a high possibility that the Ravens that they don't uh, re-sign Lamar Jackson just yet. Uh, I, I think that at, so much just depends on this year. Now, I am in no way saying that Lamar Jackson does not deserve every single dollar that he does because I believe that he definitely does. And straight out, I know some people, oh, man, Lamar, he threw more interceptions this year than he threw in his whole career. And he certainly did. He certainly did. It, 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 the numbers were not pretty. They they. Oh, they were not pretty. What it was, uh, what was it, 16 touchdowns or 14? It was something like that. I forgot what it was, but it was ugly. His interceptions were very close. They were tapping his touchdowns on the shoulder like, hey, I ain't going nowhere. But the thing, what it came down to is even though Lamar Jackson's numbers were not pretty, he has some, some games were prettier than others, but his numbers overall were not pretty pretty they weren't the number that was prettiest were the wins and the, when you think about it because i know a lot of people oh man lamar jackson he can't throw oh man lamar jackson's not accurate oh man did you see lamar jackson all those interceptions that he threw oh did you see all those passes that he missed think about this lamar jackson despite how a lot of people feel about him despite a lot of things that he needs to work on as a quarterback. Despite all of that, they were still finding ways to win with Lamar Jackson. And we know that he was not having his best statistical season. To me, he was having a season of growth. He was definitely having a season of growth because he was finding ways to win those, those super close games. He was showing how clutch he was. He showed you his clutch factor this year. He showed it to you. In overtime, he showed it to you. Well, minus that Raiders game. But in, 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 regular, uh, in regulation, in that Raiders game, he showed it to you. Because he drove the team down the field. They got the lead. It should have been a game-winning drive. But the defense couldn't hold the Raiders with 32 seconds left and no timeout. They couldn't hold them from, from kicking a field goal. But anyway. Um, so he, he, he showed, but overall this season, when he did play, he's shown you his clutch and he's shown you like, Hey, this thing don't run without me. This team does not run without me. It cannot get done without me. Ravens know that we know that. And despite how you feel about Lamar Jackson and whatever he lacks at, whatever he needs to improve on. That is one thing that you just simply can't deny. This Ravens team does not run without Lamar Jackson. It doesn't. Because we saw it again, especially in those close games. In those close games, Lamar Jackson, he has been that it factor. Because we saw what happened when he wasn't there. In, in those close games. Ravens will fight! They will fight! They will give it their all! But... This is where decision making, especially for coaching, it just became so critical. So Lamar Jackson, his value is there. And again, like we said in yesterday's video, while he's been away, while he's been out, his value just keep going up. I know my guy Trevor Watts, he brought out the little Uzi song, Prices. He just, oh, I listened to that song yesterday. I was like, oh, this song about Lamar. Then somebody else in the comment section, they said, oh, in my fat Joe voice. Today's price is not yesterday's price because it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's really not. So Lamar's value is dead. Then, then I saw somebody else say, man, uh, I think ah, I want to say it was Benny, but I'm not 100% sure. But somebody else, they questioned. They said, oh, do you think Lamar Jackson that 
he would help these franchises. He could really turn around these franchises and help them become winning teams. Like he mentioned Jaguars, Lions, Browns, uh, and, and some other teams. Yes, I do. Because Lamar Jackson, the impact, again, the numbers ain't always going to be pretty like we saw this season, but the impact is. The impact is beautiful. It's beyond just pretty. Pretty is basic. The impact is beautiful. When you realize this guy's impact, you oh my goodness, wow. That's all you can say is wow. But even with that being said, um, that one of the only reasons why I think the Ravens may just wait, may just hold off, is to really see where their franchise is headed after this season. And then another thing too, even though we know the impact is there, the impact is crazy. I think the Ravens are going to want to see how he is post-injury. Post his very first significant injury of his career. Very first one. I think they're going to want to see his bounce back game. And another thing too, say for instance, the Ravens, they and, and of course the, the rumor has been that they offered him a deal or two. I don't know how many, I don't know how much. But I know my guy Winks Chain on uh, Twitter. He was like, um, when we posted the video about when, the, when will the Ravens pay Lamar, he said, well, when he's willing to negotiate. Because he said the Ravens offered him a deal, but he turned it down. But, and, I, and I questioned him. I said, but do we know how, how much the deal was for? Do we know the guaranteed money? And he talked about how, yeah, the Ravens, they, they took care of like Flacco and Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley. And they do have a good history of taking care of their players. But they also have a good history, too, of going for a cheaper option um, and, and trying to get a sort of a Walmart deal versus Target. More value uh, for less money. So... It's just so much that we don't know about what the contract was. So despite the rumors, and they, maybe they did offer him a deal. But was that deal the best deal for Lamar? Or was it the best deal for the Ravens? We don't know. We don't know the numbers. So with Lamar too, say for instance they offered him a deal this offseason. Or even during this season while he was out. Or even while he was in. It won't be the best deal for him because the Ravens could use the numbers that he got this season and be like, look, <laughs> this ain't so pretty. So this contract that we're going to offer you is going to be nice, but it ain't going to be as pretty as it, it would have been if your numbers would have been higher. They won't say that. They'll just say the part about his numbers not being pretty because as a team, as a franchise, you, you, want, to, you want your franchise quarterback. You, you obviously want him, Tim, for the foreseeable future, but... You want to try to get his deal as cheap as possible. You do. You want to try to get his deal as cheap as possible. Because that gives you more money in other areas. It gives you more money, period. While still taking care of your franchise quarterback. So I'm sure they probably did try to take advantage of this season, of this year, of this down year. And be like, all right, hey, we ready, for, we, we, we ready to talk. Let's talk. There you go. Yeah, take it or leave it. So it would actually be in Lamar's best interest too. Well, not necessarily in his best interest, but it would be of interest of Lamar to not take a deal yet and go out there next year and just go on a tear. Go out there next year and hope that him and literally everybody else stays healthy. Like there's no way that uh, I mean, we had 2015 back in 2015, and we thought that nothing could match that injury-wise. But <laughs> here we were, 2021, and it, it matched it, and was it even worse? It was, I mean, yeah, it was right, just as bad. The season wasn't just as bad, but the, as far as injuries, yeah, it was ugly. But... There's no way that next year we get a repeat of this. So Lamar Jackson, it would be of interest to him to play it out as well. 
Um, because if he plays it out, he can show them like, hey, I'm back. And I'm all the way back. It's, this is me. Um, so that will give him an opportunity to really do his thing. Um, and with John Harbaugh, too. Uh, John Harbaugh would have a chance to right some wrongs, to right a lot of wrongs. Now, um, I still think there should be a philosophy change with these Ravens. It's funny because when I was reading, um, even though I knew this was just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. Um, when I was reading about the Texans, why the Texans they said, why they let go of Cully and their offensive and their defensive coordinator? Why, let, why they let go of the staff? They said, oh, there were just some philosophical, the f- philos- philosophical differences. I always mess up on that word. They said that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Oh, philosophical differences, huh? That's how I feel about the Ravens right now. We got some philosophical differences right now that we just, we don't see eye to eye on. Um, And again, that's why I say, even if they were to get rid of Greg Roman, even if something happened to him, I just, if if Harbaugh High is the next guy, I just really don't envision anything changing much. And and we've all talked about, too, T. Martin, the possibility of a T. Martin becoming the offensive coordinator. And that would be something because that would be new blood in the building. He only been there for a year, but he, he's, he's new blood in the building. But I just I think that they would overlook him and I think they would be like, all right, James Urban, you up. And it, with, with James, Urban, James Urban been there for a while. So I could understand why they would do that. They promote from within. Da, 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 da. Um, but I would, I would just be a little bit worried. I would just be a little bit worried. And I know him and Lamar got a better, well, they seem to have a better relationship than him and Giro. And they always talking, Lamar always talking to him after driving and stuff. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, I really don't expect any change to happen, period. So there's that. But we'll see. We'll see. But again, back to Lamar and, and his contract. It would be uh, of interest to him to wait. So he can have a bounce back year, have a bounce back season and show them like, look, yeah. All right, now you now you can pay me, now 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 you can show me that bread. So we're gonna we're gonna see, we're gonna see Lamar Hobbs. Um, they got a lot to prove. Uh, and next year they both they they both got a lot riding on next year, uh, a whole lot. But I, I do not think that they're going to uh, extend John Harbaugh's contract next season. I think they are. Uh, Going to make him play it out first. Make him play out the season first. Um, Sort of, uh, they could do one of those things where they did it back in 2018. Yeah, 2018 season. Remember when when, when, when Hawks was going to get fired? Remember all them reports? Oh, the Ravens and John Harbaugh have, and and they they hit John. (laughs) I just realized this. They hit John Harbaugh with a John Harbaugh. Because you know Harbaugh don't like firing people. He don't, he don't like the one, especially to his buddies. They hit John Harbaugh with a John Harbaugh. Because you know, we remember with Marty Morningwick. It, when, when they were trying to do the transition from Marty Morningwick to Greg Roman. Um, Greg Roman was, the, the, I think, the run game, quarter, run game coordinator. And was he assistant head coach? I forgot what else he was. I think that was it. So they'll give out these titles. Just to bring you on, John Harbaugh will be like, all right, I'm going to give you a title. I got you. There you go. But for the transition, because they, they wanted Marty out. They wanted Roman in. I said, Marty. We want to make you pass game coordinator. You, you like that? Pass game coordinator? We talking now? We talking? Oh, yeah. And apparently, Marty Morningweg turned it down. Turned down this made up position of passing game coordinator. Position that the Ravens just, they didn't even have on a team, I don't think. But they made up this position for him just so he could turn it down. So then, they, oh, well, Ravens and Marty Morningweg agreed to mutually part ways. And it was like, mm, no. Y'all wanted to fire him without making it look like you fired him. But I just realized that maybe that's where John Harbaugh got that from. Maybe that's it. Maybe I don't know. But back in 2018, it was said that the Ravens and John Harbaugh were looking to mutually part ways. Now, one thing too, say for instance, after next season, if the Ravens are like, you know what, John, we're done, because that's a possibility too. He would not go out bad because he would have fulfilled his contractual obligations and he wouldn't have had to be fired. 
So he, it would look even better for him. Like, okay, I coach for the Ravens. You see everything that I've done, the Super Bowl, all the playoff appearances, da 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 And I didn't get fired. My contract just ran out. They decided to go a different direction. So that would, it was still, yeah, it wouldn't look bad on him. I mean, everybody would look, look, look around and be like, oh, man, Ravens ain't re-signed John Harbaugh. So, but it, it would allow him to walk away uh, more dignified And we all know Because I, I, I don't get why so many people say it when, when they speak about people Who would be willing to move on from Harbaugh right now So many people say Oh well if, if, if John Harbaugh got fired Like right now If John Harbaugh got fired He would get another head coaching job like that Okay What that got to do with the Ravens what what does that have to do with the Ravens? I, I don't I don't I don't be understanding that. Like, if he got uh, he got fired, he would get another job right away. Okay, that's great. That is amazing. I seen so many people say that, and it's like, what does that even mean? That a lot of people would be interested in him? Yeah, they would be. They would be. Does that still mean that he's the best guy for the job for the Ravens and that he's the only guy? That's Because that's the thing that a lot of people feel like. John Harbaugh is the only guy for the job for the Ravens. He's not. He is not the only coach in the NFL. He is not the only coach not named uh, Bill Belichick and Andy Reid in the NFL. There are plenty of other coaches, up-and-coming guys that could do their thing. That, like, <laughs> he is not the end-all, be-all. So when people say, oh, he's, he's the only guy for the job. If Harbaugh got fired and he, he would get a job in two seconds. Yeah, he would. He would. And that is great for Harbaugh. That is amazing. I would be happy for him. He'd be back on his feet in no time. He sure would. But that doesn't mean that this Ravens ship would sink. Because it wouldn't. These players aren't going to all of a sudden forget how to play football under new coach. These players, are, and, and depending on the coach too, John Harbaugh ain't the only players coach in the world. He's not. There's other guys that are players coaches too. And other guys that could be players coaches. So, like, that, that just always makes me laugh when I see people say that. But, anyway, um, this year uh, is going to be very telling. Especially when it comes to John Harbaugh uh, and Lamar Jackson's futures uh, with the team. Uh, I feel like Lamar Jackson, as of right now, I feel like he has more stake in this team um, I, than John Harbaugh. But John Harbaugh obviously got a, a lot as well. They they respect, they love John Harbaugh, which is great. Uh, again, great players, coach. Um, players love him. Uh, family man. And, and, you know, Ravens, they, their team is like a family. So, again, that's cool, but it, that's like a good and a bad thing. That's, a, it, that's why they always say don't mix family and business. But, oh, Ravens certainly do it. So that makes making the hard decisions even harder. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Thank you for listening. I know we went on for a long time about this one, but this is something that I, I, uh, I y'all know I could talk about this all day. So anyway, appreciate y'all. And, ooh, Ravens going to have some tough decisions to make, especially next year. But we out.